Hello, Space Station 13 players. We all know that our favorite station is... unsafe. From the inexplicable shortage of protective equipment to the nuclear operatives turning the place into Swiss cheese all the time. Let's just say there's uh, quite a few job hazards. But there's one hazard that you might not know about. Those vents and scrubbers seen on the floor of nearly every room on the station. Yeah, unless those aforementioned new cops blow a hole in the station and you need to refill the air, or someone opens a plasma canister in the hallway, those vents and scrubbers are really not going to be all that helpful at keeping you alive for very long. To explain this problem, let's take a look at how our average 2D pixelated spaceman breathes. A single floor tile contains 2,500 liters of air, consisting of 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen at 101.325 kilopascals. And every 8 seconds, our bald gray titer breathes in half a liter of air, turns all the oxygen into carbon dioxide, and then breathes it out. And if there is less than 16 kPa of oxygen, then he'll start suffocating. So obviously, our scrubbers will scrub out the carbon dioxide, and the vents will replace it with oxygen, right? Wrong! No. The scrubbers will scrub out the carbon dioxide, but the vents will replace it with whatever's in the pipes at the time, which is mixed air containing 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. Which means that after our spaceman took a breath, the amount of oxygen in our single floor tile went from 20% to about 19.9968%. So, inhale. The amount of oxygen on an already unsafe space station is constantly going down and the air vents found in every room only slow this down by about 20%? He passed me. What, future me? You do realize you weren't supposed to literally say inhale. You're supposed to, you know, audibly inhale. I don't care, heck off you one great- So now that we've established that the design of the Atmo system has the potential to make our toolbox wielding assistants go horizontal, how long until our incompetent employees drop dead from the lack of oxygen? Well, as a ballpark estimate, let's just say that our station has 10,000 tiles, and that there are 50 people trying to survive on it. If we multiply our 10,000 tiles, by the 2,500 liters per tile, we get 25 million liters. Yes, I'm ignoring the fact that the station is made of rooms with walls between them. The ballpark estimate, remember? Anyways, I'm gonna take our 50 spacemen, each breathing half a liter every 8 seconds, and combine them into one mega spaceman, breathing 25 liters. And now, if we do some fancy dividing, one millionth of the station's oxygen is converted into carbon dioxide every 8 seconds, and since only 20% of that carbon dioxide becomes oxygen again, the other 80% is just poof, gone. So let's plot this. y equals 21.2% for starting oxygen times 1 minus the 0.8 divided by the 1 million raised to the power of x seconds divided by 8. Here's our plot. Now, if we draw a horizontal line at 16% and see where that intersects, that means that everyone on the station dies from lack of oxygen in approximately 33 days. Yeah. I know, compared to your average two hour round, that's pretty long, but it is a problem. Now let's take a look at a slightly more dire situation, where this process will happen even faster. Imagine two people locked in a 3 by 2 dorm room doing, uh, um, things. Actually, don't imagine that. Anyways, how long before they die? Well, we can math that out too. We have 6 tiles times 2,500 liters totaling 15,000 liters. And we have two people breathing half a liter every 8 seconds, so just one liter of breathing which means that a 15,000th of the air is breathed every 8 seconds. That means we take our 0.8 over a million from the previous graph and just replace it with 0.8 over 15,000 and we get just 12 hours. Despite the fact that just like the rest of the station, that room has a vent and a scrubber. Let's crank things up a notch. If we take our 50 people from the previous example and stuff all of them in that tiny room, they'll die 
in only 30 minutes, with perfectly functioning Atmos in that room. Anyways, we've now established that our station's air system is not as well designed as we thought, so now that you all have watched this video, I cannot wait for the pull request and I'm sure one of you will open to fix this very large problem. Thanks for uh, watching and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe or something I guess. Bye.